All right, here's a quick overview of what this video is about. I went ahead and replaced 18 foot of corrugated flex hose for my above ground pool system with one and a half inch PVC fittings going from my skimmer basket to a three-way valve where this valve also comes up to a bottom drain to suck algae out of the bottom of the pool which most above ground pools don't have and to the pump filter chlorinator and out to the outlet so stay tuned like subscribe and check out this video on how to keep your above ground pool cleaner thanks appreciate all the views and comments and likes on the uh, video i have for finding the holes in the liner and i think with all the positive feedback i got on that and and people that helped um, i had another idea for the pool to try to keep it a little bit cleaner and i thought i'd share what i was going to do um, you know, the thing I hate the most about this above ground pool is there's no bottom drain. People who have an in ground pool have a drain in the bottom and they can just sweep debris and algae and everything. They can just sweep right to that bottom drain. So my plan is to install a somewhat bottom drain in the bottom of this pool. And I'm going to do that by putting a three way valve on the pump. One valve, one side of that valve is going to go to the regular skimmer basket. And the other side of that valve, I'm gonna go up over the wall, back down into the bottom of the pool. And this is actually for a spa, like for a um, hot tub. It has a two inch inlet there, and it's just a nice looking screen. It's removable. I've got this three-way valve from Fibro Pool. And uh, you know, you push this down and you can turn it either way. So you can have either no flow, equal flow from both sides, or flow from just one side or the other or you know if you put it in the middle it does partial flow from one side or the other the other kind of specialized piece I got was this one-way valve I do have a chlorinator here hooked up after my pump and I have a one-way valve in it that I got from Menards but it's not really doing the job uh, when I do backwashing and things like that that one-way valve is not stopping the water from coming back through and this one is also a true inch and a half valve whereas that one when you look inside of it it's a lot smaller so you might also see the pipe on the ground behind me and I've got a whole bunch of fittings elbows adapters threaded everything like that all sorts of parts and pieces that I'm going to use to replace all the flexible lines off my pump system you can see how this is currently set up from the intake I have a valve here a shutoff valve From there I've got this one flexible hose going into the pump and then I've got this flexible hose, which is better. It's not corrugated, it's smooth on the inside, and it's fairly solid um, going up to the filter. Then from the filter, I've got a corrugated flex hose going from the filter down to the inlet side of the chlorinator. Then after the chlorinator, I have another flexible hose here going from the chlorinator up into the pool, the, the jet going out of the pool there. That equals up to over you know, 18 feet plus all the um, you know, skin friction on the inside of these pipes for having the corrugated interior versus a smooth wall inside pipe. So I'm going to change all of these flex hoses from the corrugated flex hose to a solid inch and a half diameter PVC pipe. Just like you see with a in-ground pool. They have hard pipes. They don't have all these flexible junk pipes. So I'm hoping that's gonna do a couple things for me. One, I'm gonna definitely cut down on the length of piping I have. Again, I have 18 feet worth of hose here. And two, I think that's also gonna relieve a little bit of stress on this pump. One, not pushing it so far, but also not going through the corrugated inside of these hoses here and all the bends and curves and everything else. Now I do admit it's gonna be a little bit harder to winterize and things like that, but I bought some unions and you'll see what I do with those to be able to make it easy to hook and unhook. And you'll see I use something called Blue Monster PTFE pipe thread sealant. So 
You know, I used to always use the tape that you had to wrap around here the correct direction, otherwise it would come off as you screwed it in. But I've since switched to using this um, sealant here. So much easier, it's got a little paintbrush on it. So all you do is stir it up and wipe it on the threads pretty uh, liberally, it says. And this stuff works for water, gasoline, oil, all sorts of stuff. And it's instantly ready for uh, fluid. So I just find this so much easier than having to wrap the tape around it, mess with that, especially when you're all hot and sweaty. You don't feel like messing with tape. And it seals up good. So if you've never used plumber's glue before, it's pretty easy. You've got both a uh, cement, which is the glue, and then you've got a primer for it, which basically just cleans the plastic before you put the glue on. So try to get the surfaces dry with a towel. You can always tell which one's glue because the top is harder to get off. And the primer is really uh, just like an alcohol pretty much. And this is special primer, it's clear. A lot of primer is purple, so you know you got it in the right spots. But it also stains really badly, so it makes a big purple drip <laughs> wherever you uh, stick it. So put that on. Now here's the glue. And then when you press them together, just push together and do a little twist. And hold it tight and keep twisting. Twist back a little bit. Until it holds.
Okay, as you can see, we now have both the skimmer box and the bottom drain hooked up. Went ahead and just put a little clamp on here. It's a stainless steel clamp, some self-tappers. And come winter time, I can remove this whole system to put the cover back on the pool. So with that union right there, you just unscrew that and this whole U-shaped piece will come off. But you can see the drain down there looking good. Got a little screen on it. So what I'm gonna do is, right now this pipe should be full of water to right here where the water line is. But from here, up and over and down to that valve is all just air currently. So if I were to switch this valve to on, it would suck a bunch of air into the pump and maybe air, air lock it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn the pump off. And, you know, there you can see the skimmer is starting to float up a little bit. But I'm gonna turn this valve so that it'll fill up water on this side up to the water level and it'll be coming from here. So watch. I can hear the water bubbling, bubbling. Just taking the water up into here. All right. So right here, that's positioned off, so no water's gonna come through here. I'm gonna position this so that just a little bit of water comes through, which would be this way. And let's turn it on. So now it's still sucking from the skimmer basket, big time. but it also should be sucking from this. All right, I got the air all purged out and I got the valve figured out. So right now it's doing 100% bottom drain. All the water to the pump is coming through that filter at the bottom. The skimmer basket is not sucking at all. So with this valve right here, wherever this is pointed, wherever the handle is pointed, that's where it's sucking from. So right now it's sucking all from bottom drain if I turn this a little bit, it's sucking a little bit from here, and you can see water starting to flow in there, but still mainly open from the bottom drain. If I turn it right there in the middle, then what that is, is that's 50-50. That's half skimmer, half bottom drain. Now, from what I've read from most uh, pool companies and whatnot is they say to set this where it's like 75% skimmer and you can see the skimmer's sucking harder now. And just a little bit bottom drain because you don't need really strong suction coming from the bottom drain. You need strong suction on the skimmer so that it skims all the leaves and bugs and sticks and stuff off the top of the water. The algae in the bottom will get sucked into here pretty easily. All right, here comes a leaf. Right here, let's see what this leaf does. It's going towards the drain. I'm not touching it. It's going towards it. And it got sucked up underneath it. I hope you guys saw that there. Because that's what we want. So another thing that I have that all above ground pools need is on my water outlet here i've got um like a directional diverter jet so it's like an eyeball and you can point which way you want the jet to flow and that way i always point mine to go i guess it's counterclockwise but it pushes away from the skimmer basket and makes the water go in a circle around the pool and that does a couple things one is on top of the water it you know centrifugal force moves all the little items like bugs and little twigs 
out to the outside so they get sucked up in the skimmer box. And the other thing it does is on the bottom, it keeps all the water, you know, constantly in a spinning motion there. And usually it kind of ends up in the center. Um, all the, you know, algae and leaves and stuff will end up in the center there. So it'd be nice if this bottom drain was in the center, but I feel like this is gonna be a lot better than no bottom drain. As the water is spinning, you know, um, there's still a good chance of it getting sucked up over here. And maybe with this suction, it'll create some sort of new, you know, underdraft or whatever in the water that's gonna also bring uh, algae over that way as well and get it sucked up and into the pump and filtered. So I'll uh, report back in a, in a couple months or before the end of the season, I'll let you guys know how it's working. But I'm pretty excited to have this going. I'm gonna throw my suit on and hop in. But I appreciate you watching. If you would, like, subscribe. Check out my channel. I've got another video on uh, repairing holes in a pool and how to actually find the leaks in your pool liner. Appreciate it.